Well, you, have have a list of you can say more words. <laughs> I'm just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean. Words, words. Okay, so we are at the. Yeah. Um, GG. The same one where, you know, but you know what? There's a. There's a... <laughs> Hi! <laughs> a little light for creepiness, I guess. You could start with my other co host that I normally have on with me. We we're talking. That should be like. No, hold on. We got the. Yeah. 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 So you have something to actually hold it. Welcome to Paranormal XL YouTube Edition. Um, I'm your host. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Hi! So that introduction is <laughs> probably going to get me every time. <laughs> so funny. Um <laughs> Where are we? Just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to Paranormal Oxal Podcast. Gigi and Mama Mary's back for another episode. Seven times, right? That's right. Always. <laughs> it's been a day, to say the least. Always had fun. Cap, always fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the internet. I can see it. Like, you see that little thing? I see it's it. like when it goes away. <laughs> So when it goes away, it's good. I know that's not how it normally happens. So you want to see it, that means good. But go back up. Anyway. <sighs> Where were we? Here, right? <laughs> no, not into sex. I don't want... Okay. Okay. It, it's fine. Everything's fine. We'll figure it out later. Anyway. So, are you, as you already know, season four is all about aliens and just spaceships and abductions and all sorts of amazing things and so much knowledge out there for all of us to take in that I could do a podcast obviously all just on that because that's what people do we're gonna put it into a season (laughs) you're welcome it's all about helping the people that's who we are as people anyway (laughs) so do you have anything to say to our listeners and our viewers it's nice to see you all again. Look for <laughs> more wine and more fun, right? Yay! <laughs> this is, you tell us toward the end of the day now, because this <laughs> is how I you know that. So, super excited um, for our next guest. You can see him backstage. I can oh. see him. He's waiting. He's waiting for <laughs> us. He's like, God, shut the hell up. Let's go. for the party. So, he has worked with <laughs> MUFON. Um, you can see him on his channels, Ancient Aliens, Sci-Fi Channels, abduction diaries also he is an author of many amazing books um i'm my notes say to play a video so i'm going to do that now because <laughs> we know what happens when i veer off my notes so let's do this and we are going to bring him on which means to recite recite and so Reverend Michael J. Carter. Hey, happy Hi. Friday. Happy Friday, Veterans Day. Um, yes. Mama Mary, thank your dad for serving for Vietnam. You. I'll do that. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm the host. Yes, you are. <laughs> and go. <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much for joining us on this sure. episode. Um, sure. Um, you'll have to excuse my actions because it's been a long day and I'm just trying to make it through, you know. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I need a nap. Just kidding. I don't need a nap. I'm super excited. So, they're ancient aliens. <laughs> Let's, okay. So, your take on aliens in the Bible and go. <laughs> Wow. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm excited to hear everything you have to say. And, yeah. No, you know, um, okay, here's my take. And 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 coming from the perspective of I grew up in the Baptist tradition, so all this stuff was devils and what well, we didn't even talk about this. And I knew nothing about it. So when I when I started having my experience, you know, it just seemed so crystal clear. And I wanna be um I want to be honest here. I'm standing on the shoulders of people before me. My my good friend, who I have to call, it's um, is Dr. Barry Downing. He wrote a book back in 1968 called The Bible and Flying Saucers. Uh, he's a retired Presbyterian minister, brilliant mind, studied in Scotland. Um, but he's not an experiencer, but that's not a big deal. But I, I, I started... When I found his books, it was like a water to a thirsty man. Uh, there was some female energy in the house. Uh, Reverend Virginia Brasington, right here in Asheville, North Carolina, back in the 50s. She wrote a book, uh, a woman by the name of C.L. Turnage, who I had the trouble, I mean, well, it was not trouble, but <laughs> she was, you know, she, no. she had a lot of health. No, she had a lot of health issues, and she lived in Dallas, but, but she, she wrote several books on uh, extraterrestrials in the Bible. She was more of a, a Zachariah Sitchin disciple. And the list can go on and on and on. But for me, they gave me the courage to to build on what they had already done. And so when I started having my experiences, I don't, I don't think like, you know, propulsion systems and back engineering. I'm not wired that way. I think more about how it transforms you. Like, like, like just this is I'm I'm not comparing this to war, but like Mary's Mary put a picture of her dad up in Vietnam. Everybody doesn't go to war, so it's like how does that experience transform you if you're fortunate enough to get back? How does it change your life? How does it inform you? Well, for me, again, not it, I, I'm not comparing it to war. It's just that the transformation that you go through, and everybody does it, but I did, and there. Um, thousands and millions of people who have. So that's where I focus. So I say everywhere everywhere you see angel in the Bible, if you put ET or star person or what have you, it just makes more sense. It doesn't take away from the beauty and the profound truths that are in these books. I don't want to step on people's toes. And I really believe that. But it, I, I think our ancestors were trying to tell us that this is what they saw they were they were astounded by the technology Absolutely. and they they worship these beings as god i think this is where our religions came from at least at least the monotheistic religion at least judaism islam and christianity and and i and i don't i'm not saying that well maybe in yahweh's case it was intentional i'm not saying that that um it was intentional to deceive but we give our power away now to to, to, to technology and, and, and to beings that we think are more powerful, whether they're celebrities or athletes. Oh, or absolutely. Whatever. Yeah. 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 A lot more often than what people should <laughs> that you see nowadays. <laughs> you want me to keep going? Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Um, I can. <laughs> I'm going to say that. So like, how old were you when you were like, yay, aliens? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, I, I'm not good at math. I'm 65 now. So um, uh, December 28, 1989. Okay. Now, looking, looking, looking back, I could say I was being visited as a child uh, because now looking back, you know, but, but, but my conscious memory of, and, and, you know, in regressions, I, I've been visited, but as my conscious you know, when I've been regressed, this information comes up. But right. my conscience memory was December 28th, 1989. I come back from Mexico uh, from uh, seeing the, the pyramids in Chichen Itza and Tulum. Now, remember, um, I was not into this at all. I hadn't even watched Star Trek. Um, <laughs> so I, I was leaving. I was I was drifting away from Christianity, mm -hmm. at least the way I grew up with it. Um right. And so when, you know, came back, I was living in New York City, um, uh, got back to Kennedy Air, uh, JFK. Um, my girlfriend at the time decided to go home. 
I had been invited to a party downtown in Hell's Kitchen. So I caught the subway down to Times Square, hung out with some friends. Um, and I just wanted to kind of show off a little bit because I was real dark and my hair was light. I was in Mexico and they were freezing their you know what's off in New York. So I kind of wanted to float. And we that we had uh, no alcohol was served. We had I had some deviled egg. I love deviled egg. I love them too much. And so I went back home. I went back home, and that night I remember turning over. I don't know whether I had to wake up to go to the bathroom or whether I just felt someone in the room. And when I turned over, because I sleep on my stomach, this person was in my room. Now. Now, he, he didn't have a robe. I had someone made it like a kind of Buddha for me. Oh, yeah. But he had, yeah, he had a head like this. And it may have been a she. Um, and he had on a jumpsuit that looked like Reynolds wrap. Okay. Uh, it was it was just looked like Reynolds wrap. It was silver. Uh, he was about four feet tall, maybe tall as four feet at the foot of my bed. And uh, my my girlfriend at the time did not wake up. She, she, either way, she couldn't wake up. And so this being looked, this was in Manhattan uh, at the Excelsior Hotel. We lived in a residential hotel. It's still there, 45 West 81st Street between Central Park West and Columbus Avenue. Mm -hmm. And this being was there. And um, I was scared. I, I've, ne I've been scared. I, I've never been as scared as that. Oh, yeah. And so I, I, I looked at the, the, the person and it looked at me and um, I pulled, I got in a fetal position I come, and it had, it had, uh, what she, it, it was like this blue light around it, like a lapis blue. And then around that was all like my whole room was lit. And yeah. so I pulled the cover up over my head and got in the fetal position. And yeah. I felt, I heard this noise, like the wind was blowing. It was like, whoosh, whoosh. I mean, it was really intense. And I felt like I was outside. And I was like, what? Because we lived on the 15th floor. So if I was outside, it was significant, but it felt like. It. And so finally, I pulled the covers down and no one was there. Sandy woke up. Uh, she's a very spiritual woman. She, she put up with it. And she, she just, you know, she just, she believed me. Um, and then they started coming twice a month for eight months to a year, every full and new moon. Sometimes they will always paralyze me. And sometimes they would show me like a past life or something yes. that would happen in the future. Nothing sexy, like some big profound truth, but like an event that happened in my life. Right. And, I, and when it happened, I would go, oh, my God. Um, they would show me pictures of what they were doing. They worked on my throat chakra. It was like electricity going through me all the time. And they, um, they worked on my throat chakra a lot. And they paralyzed me. I don't know whether they thought I was going to hit them or what have you. One time they stuck a needle in the back of my head here and, and it hurt like I don't know what. And I talked to a friend of mine. I wasn't sleeping at night. I mean, I was really going through some trauma. Well, yeah. and I wound up being regressed by Bud, Bud Hopkins and this woman named Jean Monday. They both crossed over. But um, and, and my friend said, you know, you need to set some boundaries with these people. Really? And I said, what, 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 what? They to listen to me. And she said, oh, yeah, you, you need. So she said, even if you feel stupid because they're in your house, you probably don't even see them. And she said, walk around and tell them. And I did. I remember one time Sandy came home at the time. That was my girlfriend at the time. And she said, I walked in the door and you were in your underwear yelling up at the scene. <laughs> and she said, I was. I just looked at you and kept, I remember that. And I told them, you can't do that. So they came again, remember it's twice a month and um, I was paralyzed and they, they, they showed me in my third eye, a syringe. And it's almost like when you give blood and the nurse is so good, he or she, you don't even feel it. Mm -hmm. And they, they put a needle in my head. I didn't even feel it. And so I thought that they listened. I thought that, Hey, they changed their behavior. Right. Um, and you know, I what, what my hair started growing faster, my nails. I got by with less sleep. All of a sudden, I had to study Reiki. All of a sudden, I wanted to be a healer. I I, I can't. I guess, I guess now that, they call it downloads. I just felt smarter. I felt more intelligent. But most importantly, I felt that my heart opened. It was easier for me. Um, I'm a loving person, and I and and I really am. But I, it just felt easier. I, I was. It was easier for me to say I was afraid. It was easier for me to tell people I love you. Um, it was easier. 
it was like something opened up in me. And and then other people came, like 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 this person came, this reptilian person came. They came twice, but they were he was big, and it was a male voice when he spoke to me. But his mouth didn't move. It was like I had a um, like I had a speaker in my head. His mouth didn't move, but he would just look, and he scared the Jesus out of me as well because he just walked in my wall, and 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 he was built like mm-hmm. like like went to a gym or something, mm-hmm. and he had a wife he had a wife beater on. He had on a, a t-shirt. Uh, and, and his eyes were beautiful. They weren't beautiful then because I was scared. But his eyes were beautiful because the pupils were um, like that, vertical. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. Vertical. And they were yellow. He was beautiful, but he wasn't beautiful then because I was scared. Oh, absolutely. And he, and he said, and he said, "Don't be afraid." Which is easy for them to say. Um, and he touched me with these, and he stood up on two feet, and he had a tail, uh, and nothing else ever happened. One other time, one came in in my room and just look, nothing ever happened. So when people talk bad about reptilians, I just say, not all, because no one ever hurt me. Um, and so time went on and I'm not getting away from religion. At least, you know, Jesus was my brother instead of a God. And 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 and, and I'm even further away now. And I, and I remember I was always studying too. It wasn't like they waved on. I was reading existentialist philosophers. I was studying the occult. I was reading people's auras. I was doing tarot. So I was moving yeah. gently away to more metaphysics. I started going to uh, science of mo- religious science and unity and all that. So I was on a journey. And so, you know, I, I got in a support group and that helped me. Luckily, the partners I was with, they didn't think I was crazy because these things can break up your marriage. It can break up relationships if one person is having these experiences and you're not there's there's going to be a problem yeah because you start changing you start getting around other folks and it's easy to get jealous or attracted and all that kind of um and then i finally left my my religion of origin my parents religion and i started my own kind of theology i mean i'm a minister and i'm a unitarian universalist minister and so people say well how can you be a minister if you don't believe in god the same way but you don't have to and and i knew that before I met these these uh, star people, and then um, um, on on July fourth, twenty nineteen, I had a blood clot, and I had a lot. I have a lot of friends who served in Vietnam. Uh, some one, one Otis, he's a short order cook. He was at Hamburger Hill. My friend Mike Panetta uh, and some people, some other folks, they were in. Um, uh, they went across the fence into Laos when, when Nixon, I mean, we weren't supposed to be doing that. They were fifth special forces. And, and you know, I have a lot of friends who were, yeah. who were there. And so they were telling me about the stuff they had to go through, sleeping in a foxhole, in the rain, in the mud, and incoming and outgoing artillery. And um, so on, on the 13th, uh, on July 4th, they canceled the fireworks here because it was torrential. And I'm not a big fireworks person. Because, you know, they start at 930. You got to get there at seven. You got to find a parking space. Yep. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so crowded. You need a lubricant there. I'm, 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 <laughs> people, people are sitting so close. It's like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's personal, you know, no. it's really. Per- and, 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 you know, and then they show them for a half hour. And yep. then you got to pick up and go. So I was so happy. And and it was thunder and lightning and I, I couldn't sleep. And I said to myself, this is what my buddies were telling me about when they were either in the Central Highlands or they went over the fence in Laos or what have you. And again, I had that weird feeling um, that somebody was in my room. The backstory is I had a blood clot and I never had a blood clot before. And my leg was huge. It was from my ankle to the groin area. And um, uh, the doctors thought it was going to kill me, but I knew, I just knew in my spirit that when I go, it won't be from a blood clot. But but I had to take a Wayfair, a Nexapair, and I was injecting my trying to think this. So on July 4th, 2013, at, um, hold on, because in California, at 10 minutes to 10, this person came in my room, a Nordic person. Only he had a hoodie, not a hoodie, Jesus. I don't wear it's a um, it's a it's a a, 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 cowl, a cowl like they wore back in the 18th century. They're big. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like Mary wore when she was a witch in the 13th century. 
He had a rope. He had a, he had a rope belt, and and I was like, whoa! And uh, 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 my heart boom, boom, boom. And it was the same way. Even though these other brothers and sisters looked a little different, he looked more human. But still, it was it scared me. I mean, how did you get in my house? You just so anyway. Um, he held his hand out, and an apple green light came out. I remember that, and I remember because I sat up like what, and he, and it hit me in my stomach. But I remember not feeling any pain. And then he just dissolved. He dissolved like you do on start. He just his molecules. So the first thing I did was when I looked down. My leg was healed. It was not the, it was the normal size. I called Preston Dennett. I don't know if you know Preston. He's a good brother. You should have him on the show. He's written several books, but he's written books about UFO healings. But Preston's in California. So when I called him at 10 of 10, it was 10 of 7 there. So he was just probably hanging out or whatever. We did we did get to talk later. And he put my story in in one of his books. But so they healed my blood clot. I had to go to the doctor and explain how that blood clot went away. How'd that go? I lied. Of course I lied. Of course I lied. <laughs> course I lied. I, they're not going to lock me up. But, but they, they kept asking me and asking me, you know, yeah, Mr. Carter, but you were just here 10 days ago. We stuck your finger and we took your blood. You still had the clot. So finally, I just said to them that, aren't you happy for me? Aren't you happy? I don't know what happened. You're a person of science. I appreciate science. I can't explain this and you can't explain it either, but it's gone. Why can't we just leave it at that? And and they backed off. Yeah. And yeah. so the rest the rest of that was so and and then the last one and then I'm going to let you ask me a question because I, I can go for on. This person came <laughs> this mantis person. I was at a, um I spoke at a conference in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, Stanton Friedman was there. He was still alive. Travis is at all of them. So Travis was there. Steve Bassett was there. Um, and that was the first time I met a CIA person uh, at a UFO. CIA. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, we could talk about that. Um, and, um, and so this, so, you know, they gave me a standing ovation. I had never had a standing ovation at a UFO conference. And, um, and I, I said, oh, my God, uh, good. So um, this woman, people bought the books. And so this woman who I made friends with, she lived in Tennessee and she knows some people that I know. Uh, we stayed in touch for a while, but um, she had a girlfriend and she said, I told my girlfriend about you. And she's, she get this, she's a lawyer and a psychic. I don't know what, I don't know. You talk about left and right brain coming together. I don't know what, what uh what jurisprudence he practiced. Right. I don't know if it was criminal law or 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 you know, I don't know. That but she said, she, said uh, she wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. Um uh I, she said, should I give her your number? I said, no, nah, no, just have a call when you're there. So she called and she said, you know, some nice things. And she said, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. And she said, and I'm telling you is the truth. And I said, okay. She said, I see praying mantis beings around. You. And I said, okay. I mean, what am I supposed to say? Right. Uh, so she said, I'm serious. I said, okay. She said, um, have you ever seen them? I said, no, my I friends said, in Europe have seen them, but I just see the little gray, white, whitish looking people. And I see some, yeah. you know, I saw a Nordic person. She said, oh no, they're, they're around you. And so she said, I'm going to tell you in three days, you're going to, they're going to make themselves known. And so the first night, you know, the next night, you know, I was like, well, I don't know. You know, it, it was I, I said, no, it's in my head. You know, my hair was, I was walking around my house and my hair would stand up on end. But that could be my brother. My brother was murdered back in 95. Someone robbed him and killed him. And he smoked cigarettes. And so sometimes when he was around, I, I smelled cigarettes in the house. Yeah. Um, and one time I smelled cigarettes around you, Mary, when we were talking. I know. But anyway, um, Smoke. So I said, no, that's, I said, no, that's good. <laughs> I said, she's in, she's in my mind, man. She made that shit up. And then the second night, it was getting a little weird. You know, I kept hearing noises and um, I go from room to room and it would be like chills. And I said, no, no, she put that in your mind, man. The third night, I was lying on my back. I couldn't sleep. I was trying to meditate and I was just drifting off. 
And I felt like someone on my bed. And when I opened my eyes, this individual was staring like that far from my face. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And then, and it just looked, I was like paralyzed with fear and those big eyes. And it looked at me, it was almost like they were watering or something. And then boom, gone, gone. So, and, and the only other thing I had was um, I had a dream. I was I was in the alpha state, but I wasn't already out. And then this person, Arcturian, but they didn't have that little thing on their head, but they had a big head like that. And it was like they were just there, like I just saw they were there, and then they left. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Iced, iced tea. Here's some iced tea. Uh-huh. Long Island? Is it a Long Island iced tea? No, you know, I I, this, I like scotch, mm-hmm. really good scotch, like the peaty, <laughs> smoky scotch. I like some vodka. I like, but I love champagne. I just oh, love it. And I love good. cognac. I love cognac. You know, and, and I like beer, but I like European beer. Oh, you're famous. You know I mean? uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I got, what is it? I got, uh, what is it? I got, I got steak taste, but I got, and I don't eat meat, but I'm using metaphor, but I got, and I got hamburger money. So yes, <laughs> yes my mom always told me I had champagne taste, but a Kool-Aid. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the same. <laughs> well, but, that. anyway, but, but, but that's what it was. I love the Bible. Oh, I got several of them right here mm-hmm. and, and I talk about it. And, um, um, I was I was telling Mary that when I come out again in September, I'm going to focus more on the spiritual transformation. People love the biblical stuff, and why not? Because it's but um, it's just kind of more to it. My 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 concept of God has changed. I don't um, my, the God whatever it is. I don't even like to use the word. It's it's just less. It's less personal. Yeah. It's just more abstract. It's like an energy. It's an intelligence. I can commune with it in meditation or if I go walk out here around the pond here or whatever. It's not a person it's punishing me. Um, you know, it's not that kind of thing. When he comes when he comes out in September, he's gonna let me do live regression. Oh, yes. He's gonna be my next yes. Sweet. Yes. I will be there. I'm gonna be there. <laughs> I'm inviting myself there. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Well you you I'm sure you're more than welcome, but yeah, but that anyway, if you want to, you can ask me anything. But that's, <laughs> that's where I am. Okay, so when you, so you have a church that you actually. Yeah, I'm a minister there. Okay, so. And, and I'm not, oh, just give me one second. Yeah. Because somebody from the church is just asking oh. me about someone. No, no, it's okay. There you go. Um, I, I'm on call. I'm always on call. But no, ask okay. me, ask me. So. Ask me. What, when, when you are writing your scriptures, what. You mean my sermon? Sermons, that's what I meant. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't write the scripture. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, where do you get your... My inspiration. Yeah. Your mom and I were talking about this. Well, obviously, when I was in the more Christian tradition, it had to be the Bible. But with Unitarian Universalism, I can I can use the Bible. I can use the New York Times. I can use the Hindu scriptures. I can use a conversation I have with someone on an airplane. I mean, if it's relevant, I'm yeah. free to use. I can look, look magazines. It's fun. It's a yeah. challenge because it's so many different, um, you know, like you'll, there'll be a Christian sitting next to um, an atheist sitting next to a Wiccan person. Um, that we makes don't have our happy just to hear that. Uh-huh. Though. It does. It just. Yeah. 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 We, we, you know, and people make fun of us because they say you don't believe in anything, but we just believe that all paths will get you where you need to go. They just don't have to be the same path. No. And um, and we have some Christians there. They're liberal Christians. Like they'll look at Jesus more as their brother as opposed to a God. Right. But any God that's in Jesus is in all of us here because he even said that. Mm-hmm. So um, we just try to keep it simple. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's some people, it's not for everybody, but it's all good. Well, exactly. You're, you're welcoming everybody. I love the yeah. whole thought, the energy that goes behind that. Like I just... That is so awesome because you just you well you just don't hear that very often. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. I mean, we have a thing. We have a sign that says "Love Beyond Belief" because love transcends all that. And um, I need that on a shirt. I need that on a shirt. I like. Yeah, that. it's called "Love Beyond Belief," and uh, we just we just try to welcome folks. It's not a UFO church. I've some years ago, some people tried to get me fired when they found out 
I was on Ancient Aliens, but the church said no, which I was very grateful. Um, I don't preach it from the pulpit, but they they know that I talk about it and they know I share stuff with them, but it's not the topic of my sermon. And if and if it relates, then I'll bring in a UFO thing, they or reincarnation or whatever. But but I don't force it down. That's not what they hired me. For. Right, right. People. <laughs> so what yeah. do you think is the purpose of ET in your life? Um, okay. I think when I when when they were coming, I was in New York City and I was an actor. And that's a fast lifestyle, you know. I mean, I was doing some soap opera stuff and all and so and some broad, you know, off Broadway stuff. And so um I hold on, I'm just telling them I will see them tomorrow. Okay. I uh I think it was to get me, I mean, I was drinking and sexing and smoking and I was carrying, I was living a fast life. Mm-hmm. And never once did they say, what are you doing? But it made, it just when just by them visiting me, it made me go, you're wasting your life. Not being an actor, but I was living, you know, it's you party, you do the shows. And that was, um, that's one part. A very, very talented friend of mine who's dead now, he was a psychic. He told me that he knew about them before I even mentioned it, which was astounding to me. But he was a psychic. So he was a very talented. Psychic. And um, he said that this my relationship with them is from Atlantis. It's from Egypt. It's from past lives. So this is not my first time. It's not my first rodeo with them. But, you know, between lifetimes, you forget. And um, I'm here. There's one thing I won't share because it's a karmic thing, I think, and I need to. To, to, to rectify that in my life around wow. them, probably wow. telling people they didn't exist. But I, that's, that's, that's more of a personal thing that I, I need in this life. But it's, it's to show people, listen, I picked a brown body them, okay? I'm a male, I'm a heterosexual male in a brown body. Other times I was probably a different race, different. So I know, not just because I'm brown, because you can be a woman and be more like But I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to be different. I know what it's like to be alien. I know what it's like to be marginalized. Mm-hmm. I, I'm also an anti-racism trainer. I, I, I've been recognized by President Clinton uh, for my work, and I'm very proud of that. But my point is, is we're, we're doing to them what we do to each other. Because they look different, because that, and you just don't want to be doing it. No. You know, you don't want to be judging people like that. You want to be in connection, and you want to, you you know, you at least want to, uh, you want to explore. You want to build a bridge instead of building a wall. And I think that, that is part. But I do that anyway with, with Earth with people on Earth. So I think it's just a continuation of a theme that's in my life. So this might be. A little controversial, <laughs> a little look on your face. Just, just a thought, because no, you're no, talking what's about controversial. We're talking about space people, Mary. I and, know. And, and oh, so, yeah, like yeah. We're talking about how ET came in to slow you down. It's kind of the same theory when you think about COVID. And so, before COVID hit, I remember channeling ET and them telling me that something was coming. They showed me something was coming, and they gave me timelines of exactly when it was going to come. And then. Okay. Look, three months later, Boom. I didn't realize what the what the message was until it <laughs> until it happened. That was actually one of the episodes. It, I we think. did. We did an episode. Episode. Oh my god! Record, hit record. Got shit to tell you yeah, before it even yeah. happened because then it went into other things when I was meditating with Hitler and, and science experiments. What would you say? And it's controversial, so it's just a what would you say type of thing. Where I always have felt that we are created by ET. There is God's source. Yes. Consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. But ET yes. is too. So we've been seated yes. on this planet as experiments. And sometimes the experiments go bad, like the city of Atlantis. They take it out. They redo it so that we can raise in consciousness so that we can actually evolve, so that we can join the galactic community. So mm-hmm. what if COVID was the same thing? What if it was some type of experiment to slow us down, to get us centered on love and what was really important connection with others? Well, other better way to be connected with others than to be stuck at home with the people you're supposed to love the most. Oh, <laughs> right? yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a perspective. I, I mean, we know that anything is possible, but we also know that we're back to our same old tricks as human beings. I, I think that you, I think those who are woke enough, and I'm using that word intentionally because I'm not ashamed of that. Buddha said he was awake. I'm not, you, you know, I know how it's used in the culture. But my point being is this: when you're aware, you can see signs, you can get those messages, and you can say, "Hey." Um, I can use this time for something else. Now, there are some people, so if you if you felt that, then you slowed down. Um, I know for me, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I, I, I like being alone. So when I didn't have to go out, it was like, but my friends, good people, uh, you know, they, if, if you're, if you were an extrovert, or you are an extrovert, that was a living hell because they need other people to get that energy up. So I think it's what you make of it. For someone else, it could be a nightmare. And for those of us who may see life from a different perspective, it was an opportunity. Amen to that. Yes, I think it told everybody, like, slow the hell down. Yeah, it forced you. I mean, it was beautiful. I I I see your point, Mary. I see your point, Mary. There was less pollution because less people, less people were driving. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a lot going on. But again, for those of us who got it, and I'm not saying we're exclusive or we're better, but we saw something in it. And for other people, it was just like, you know, it was a manure show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, life's all about perspective. It definitely is. It is about perspective. And, and it's what your perspective is for you. It's not right or wrong. It's just for you. And right. that's what quantum physics is telling us. You know, in this type of work, and I'm, I'm talking about what I do, what you do, Mary. Um, we, You know, it's and Sarah easy. Sarah does it too. Sarah, it, it, it's easy to get to that place where why aren't they seeing it my way? Why aren't they getting it? <laughs> and you have to be careful of that because that's where the ego creeps in and you get to say, I'm special and you're not. How many you times did you hit you in the third <laughs> eye? <laughs> or, or I'm arrogant. You know, you know what? You know, you, you have to have compassion. Oh, absolutely. Because probably in your last lifetime or maybe just a few months ago, you know, we were those people. Mm-hmm. I have a friend. He's gone now, I'm sure. Uh, he was... Um, a, a, a massage therapist, and he was a, a, a monk. I don't know what, what order. It was Franciscan or Benedict. He wound up being an atheist, but he was the most spiritual person I knew, and he was an atheist. And um, But he was older and much wiser, and he would tell me stuff, and, you know, I wanted to go out and change the world. You know, I'm going to be Dr. King, and, and then I, no, I'm going to be Denzel Watch. I'm going to be, I'm going to make, and, and he used to say, hey, man, enjoy your life. And I used to say, you're not getting it. You're just an old man. And uh, and now I'm him. He was just so wise. I just couldn't see it. Then. And I was younger and I had all the answers. And, uh, you know, I don't need to change the world. I just need to change myself. You know, I got a family. Um, I got a lovely daughter. I got some good friends. Um, you know, I got my health for the most part. I got, you know, I got, I got, I'm living the dream. And so, you know, I, I need to, I need to be thankful for that. And I am. And so, you know, I'll plant a seed here and there and I don't get upset because I don't need to be getting it. All I need to be doing is living my life to the best of my ability. And the rest will take care of itself. The rest will take care of itself. Even if we get blown up or a big rock hits us or we get flooded, you know, it's not about all that. It's about, well, Michael, what did you do with the time you had? That's what I believe, you know, and I try not to worry about things I can't control. It may get me for a little while, whether it's politics or if I can't control it, I need to let it go because it's going to take away um, my joy. Mm-hmm. And you need the joy in order to have hope. Uh, your mom and I were talking about this the other day in Hinduism. Well, in the Vedic scriptures, they talk about ways of knowing. In the West, we call it epistemology. It's a big thing. But Mark Twain said, never use a, never use a 50 cent word when a 25 cent word will do. But it's ways of knowing. And they say there are two ways of knowing there's knowledge that you acquire, which is reading, studying, and then there's knowledge that you become. 
And that's the higher form of knowledge. Absolutely. So you, yeah, you can't get here from here. You can't do it. You, it's like being depressed and being joyful at the same time. They can't reside in the same, same place. The longest journey that you will ever take will be from here to your heart chakra. Longest journey. And so I'm trying to become the, I want I want the wisdom, I, I, I want the knowledge that you become. Because that exactly. way you don't have to talk about it, you just live it. Yep. You just live it. Well, that and sense. that's what I've got, that's what I got on my journey and from meeting them. They never told me that, but they led me to those places. Or maybe they did tell me. Maybe they put it in my head when I was asleep or whatever. But um, that's that's where this journey has taken me. So for the viewers, how do you get out of here, out of that head, into the heart chakra? Meditation. All genuine spiritual path. Talk about meditation. Now, I'm not talking about you have to sit in the lotus position, and, and, and that's the way I do it. I like the Zen style of meditation. But it, it, it's, it's meditation and contemplation. It's being alone. It's getting to a place where you can be alone and, and you know, and, and you can be out here, out here. We got a little pond out here. It's just where you can be alone and feel and, and to feel, not to think, but to feel. Um, and so whether you're trying to develop your psychic ability, whether you're trying to, um, you know, just just chill, to be still and to know, because you can not hear the messages that you need to hear whether you want to call it God or spirit or goddess or the force, you can't hear him when you're going all the time. You, you become a human doing instead of a human being. So any genuine spirit, spiritual path will always tell you you've got to spend time alone and quiet. Even if you're just, you know, you could be journaling. I keep a journal. You know, um, sometimes I just sit on the porch and just stare. And time to, to think as well. But that's how you get out of your head. But in a 21st century life where you're running and going and doing and we're all consumers and we're not really human beings, we're just numbers. What's your social? What's this number? What's that number? What's your mm -hmm. life? It, it dehumanizes. And you've got to, to say, wait a minute, I'm more, I'm more than you. And that you're worth the time. You're worth five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day to be with Sarah, to be with Mary, I'm worth it, right? Yes. Are you yeah. Sarah? Is Gigi and Sarah the same person? Okay. Yeah, you're worth it. <laughs> Gigi's my alter ego. She's a lot funnier than Sarah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so anyway, but that that's how it answers your question. Those spiritual uh, of meditation, contemplation, being alone, uh, writing, journaling. Uh, it gets you out of here and into here. Yeah. So you can feel. What makes you a human being is that you feel. Um, that's what makes you human because you can, you can rationalize anything. I mean, Hitler rationalized what he did to the Jews. Your mind can do, you, you can, your mind can make you do anything, but, but you got to get in your heart chakra. And then basically you want to use both so right. you can be whole. It's all about the balance. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like the yin yang, you know, a little dark in the light, a little light in the dark. Absolutely. Like that was. Hey, you can't have the darkness without the light. No, you really can't. I think I've said that like 862 times this week. <laughs> everybody, I'm like, all right, look, MFers, I ain't got time for this. This is what's yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> Buckle up. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes you got to get away from that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus, all those stories, you know, he, he goes off in the mountains. He goes away. You got to recharge. Yeah. You got to recharge. And they would follow him some of them. <laughs> You know, you get on a little boat and go across the Sea of Galilee and there you get off the boat and there they are. But but you needed that time to, to, to recharge and to commune with whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So how many books have you written? I know you've written books, but never got a I even knew that. I did not know and that. And that's not even written down. It's because I sucked them. <laughs> Yeah, I've written five, and they're, and they're quick reads, I think. But they 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 cover they cover my interest. I I was getting known as the UFO minister, and I didn't want that. And but that's the, that's the label I'm getting. But I wrote a book on prayer and meditation, and I wrote a meditation manual. Um, this one is called the Metaphysics of Spiritual Healing and the Power of Affirmative. Did you prayer. even watch the video I sent to you that I made for him? 
Well, I saw the, I saw the there. screen thingies. Yeah, and I wrote this one, God Consciousness. It's a 30-day, uh, it's, it's, it's a meditation manual for a month, but it's got quotes from atheists, from Hindus, from scientists, from Christians, yeah. And of course, the other two books about UFOs and the Bible, and this one is for experiencers. It's called Initiation. This is for people who are experiencers or they think they are. There's a chapter on when you're in a relationship and one of you is an experiencer and the other one isn't. And then there's several chapters on um, people who've had experience. So which one is the most meaningful to you? Oh, God, it's hard. You know, they all are. Uh, because I was at different spaces in my development. Um, the UFOs and the Bibles, those first two books will always be near and dear. Um, and that's, that's yes, those sell the most. Um, the, the initiation one is the latest. I wrote that last year. Uh, and I'm going to focus more on that. But I think even to pray, I mean, even without the UFO experiences, that, you know, there's a way that we can commune in an affirmative way, instead of looking at God like as a Santa Claus, and and obviously you 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 know this, Mary, and I'm sure you do, Sarah, that we can affirm what that we already have it and we can manifest. But we're not taught that. We're taught, dear God, please give me this. Dear God, please give me that. If you don't give it to me, that means I was a bad person. And I think that we need to get away from that. And I, you know, if, if it if it moves you. And I think the meditation manual is nice. It's nice to wake up every day. And not the first thing I do is go on my phone. I do get there, um, but I can read a piece. I can read some poetry. I can read something inspirational. Uh, you know, I can read uh, an affirmation. Just something to start and set up the day because that's the way my day is going to be. And so, but it's so easy just to get on the phone, you know? Get that, yes. That's what I always tell people when I'm giving them readings is meditation's more it doesn't have to be sitting there quietly for five minutes. Yes. I, yeah, everybody but, thinks that they're doing it wrong. Um, no. no, there's no there's no way to do it. Who's but telling you, you this? To remember, as long as it's calming you down. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody's got long- their own triggers and and the you, you know, you, experience is what yeah. we're going after. You know, we're all different, so what's going to calm me isn't going to necessarily calm you. So exactly, it's I, not a competition. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, and you know, I, I mean, there are oh, times, oh. Like, no, there are times, I, there's time I, I have a mat, you know, like a Buddhist mat. And sometimes I sit down and I'll just start crying. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, well, where was that from? And then I try not to think, think that because now I'm out of my feelings. As soon as I start thinking, then the tears stop. But obviously, I was carrying all that around and it could have been tears of joy, but it, maybe it wasn't. But my point being, if I didn't take the time to be still, I'm walking around with that. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to treat you from that place. I'm going to treat my dog or my, my four-legger from that place. I'm going to treat my partner from that place because I don't know what I'm feeling. Exactly. It's got to come out and that's the body cleansing. So you got to take your time. You got to take the time to feel. So it comes out in weird, <laughs> weird times. There's a video out there that my daughter has. We had family game night. I'm laughing, all of a sudden I just started crying. I'm like, I don't even know what's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean a minute? I knew what was like, I didn't know what triggered that, but I knew like what was happening. My emotions were physically cleansing themselves right yeah. now. Yeah. I yeah. liked it or not. <laughs> it yeah. <is> yeah. <laughs> and and it's fine. good. And it's good. It's good not to think too much because then you'll stop. It's like sometimes, and some people don't even know that they're doing it. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you get around people and let's say someone is crying or someone tr- something triggers. A lot of people, the first thing they do is, oh, let me give you a hug. Boom. And sometimes people, that the person doesn't need a hug. It's good to ask. But sometimes we do that because we're uncomfortable with the display of emotion. Yeah. And so we stop it. We get uncomfortable. And a lot of times we don't know we're doing it, but sometimes you just let people be, you know, when, when I do counseling, uh, the other day I had someone we, and, and, and something triggered her about some, something between her and her ex-husband and she started crying. And I, you know, I just said, there's some Kleenex there and I let her go through what she needed to go through. And then I'll you know, talk about that. What, what, what was going on? That's what, that's what we need. You don't need to fix everything. Sometimes you got to let things be. And it'll, it'll be okay. 
Oh, absolutely. It's got to let it run its course and see its way out on its on mm-hmm. its terms. We can't control can't control all, all this. All this <laughs> has got a hell of a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I'm a disaster. No, you're not. <laughs> Well, it has been such an honor and pleasure meeting you and talking with you and hearing everything you have to say. I, I am like still taking it it's all in. I, I really am because I did not know what to expect with this. I mean, I did stalk you, whatever, but it's different when you it get what it is. <laughs> when you get to actually talk to the person and hear from their own words versus like what I see on the internet or on a TV show clip that I got, so, you know, stuff like that. It was, um, no, this yeah. was very enjoyable. And I, I've highly enjoyed talking to you, being able to pick your brain a little bit. Cause I was a little confused. Cause I was like, how do you put the Bible with aliens? Like, I've just never thought about it that way. I know there's. Yeah. Well, I mean, but they're telling you, they're telling you in the Bible that these, in, in the language of their day, you know, these the flying chariots, they're coming down from the sky. These beings are coming from the sky. Now, notice nowhere in the Bible does it say these angels have wings. I'm not saying angels don't have wings. I don't want your listeners to to get upset. But nowhere in the Bible, I think that wings were put on these beings. Our ancestors were trying to tell us they could fly. But, 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 you know, the Jewish religion, the, the Exodus, they're following a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. It's in the sky. It stops. It right. hovers. It feeds them. Uh, you know, Enoch, the book of Enoch, um, Enoch these beings are, are, are coming down from the sky. Uh, it's all through the Bible. If you look at Elijah, he goes up in, a, in the chariot. Yeah. So they're trying to tell you in the language of their day. You right. know, they are like, yeah. taking it literal. Yeah. Because that's what you <laughs> Well, I, I think we need to take it literally. I don't, I don't think they're making it up. Right. They're telling you what they're seeing. Jesus uh, leaves in a cloud. Uh, they say he's going to come back in a cloud. But they, our ancestors weren't stupid. They know people didn't ride in clouds. But they do know that UFOs camouflage themselves in the clouds. That, right. that little angel hair mist that can come out of the back of them. Sometimes that can look like a cloud. It glows, you know, the pillar of fire a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. That's their way of saying this thing glows. Right. It's like a pillar of fire. So, and you're like, it's in the sky. It's unidentified. Isn't that the definition of a UAP? Isn't that the ne- definition of a UFO? So the Bible, it's all in it there. Even in the right. Hindu scriptures, in the Upanishads, in the Mahabharata, they talk about vimanas. They're flying machines. And they fight each other. They shoot at each other. Yeah. So, so this has been going on since the beginning of time. It's crazy how many people like don't allow their brains to wrap around it, if that makes sense. Well, it's hidden in plain sight. But, but, but guess what? What are you going to do? You can't go to your church and your minister and tell them this. They're going to say something's wrong with you. You know, but now you can. In some church, at least in my church, you can. Well, good. I'm coming then. Let's go. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. If you're ever in this church. <laughs> yeah. there, and if you can't go, um, I think Mary, you can go online and watch my service, oh, which you did. That's I how did. you got that clip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, I was gonna say. Well, I know we've gone over. I got a couple oh, minutes. It's, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like you don't have, <laughs> like you don't have anything better than do to talk to talk to us. Yeah, I got that. Sorry, that's all you do. <laughs> You're stuck. <laughs> Yeah. Poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even feel yeah. bad for you at all. No. Like, a little bit. Well, as long as, long as I, I got enough energy to talk to Michael and. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot about them. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh-huh. No, it has been a pleasure. I would like to have you on again sometime. Just call me. Just let me. Just let me know. Well, this was it's not great. a big deal. Just, just let me know. Well, That's Mary can let me know, and we'll. You know, if one day doesn't work, we'll do another day. Oh, it's a little busier now with the um, holidays coming up, but you don't know unless you ask. So That's if you right. say, hey, what are you doing? Uh, do you have, it? you know, and uh, I'll say either I can't, let's try this day or what, but it's not, yeah. I would we'll love to. Awesome. I would love to. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I've, I've. Thank you. So when is this going to air? Will you send me the link? 
I will send you the link. So first, it will be out um, audio, and then a week after that, I will release the this video part. Yeah, send me this. Okay. Oh, you want the good stuff? I, I can send you this, actually, before I release anything. Whenever, whenever. It's no, really, it's no... Um, I got you. <laughs> no big deal. Well, you want to look back and see how much fun you had? <laughs> yeah. You know, I like, you know what I do? Yes. And I like to, and I like to send them to my friends and that way you get advertising and I get advertising. That's amazing. That's what I say. See, yeah. I love that. You kind of got to spread the wealth, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get you. I love that. So yeah. you have anything else to say? You know, wrap this up so we can get wrap prepared this for shit. Let's go wrap this shit up so he can go wrap cheat on us. I see how don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> Until don't next time. That. I'll see y'all. I'll probably talk to you. You know, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. oh, but Gigi, G G A K A Sarah. That's right. It was a I, it was a pleasure being yeah. on your show. Well, thank you I for think. coming on. I, it's it's. I'm so excited. The whole season. I based the whole season on aliens and. Abby. Yeah. That's it. a nice oh. way to do it. That's a yeah. nice way to do it. I didn't it. want to like try to cram it into an hour. Up. There's way too much, even in a season. That's that's too much yes. to put in. Well, you know what you can do if if you're ever interested. Um, like like when when I first started talking about this, and and people would say, "Can you come on and talk about you know like around Christmas time, yeah. you know, talking about uh, the Star of Bethlehem because I believe it was the ship." Uh, maybe around Easter, you talk about, you know, everything that was going on then with the crucifixion and the, all those possibilities. No, I'm not saying you do it that way, but that way, it's a little different. It's a little different. Oh, I do different. like that. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I got my pen here. <laughs> yeah. Strange. Yes. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think you're crazy. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. I like it. Please do. Yeah, <laughs> See, I know. I know. No. After I talk to Michael and Dale, I'm going to have a beverage. As well. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have some champagne. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So should we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. All right. So thank you so much for joining us on this amazing episode. You don't want to add anything. <laughs> <in my notes. laughs> Remember to follow us on social media. Just search up Paranormal XL. Sometimes it's podcast, sometimes just, just put in Paranormal XL. Even on Amazon, it's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, send in your paranormal stories or episode ideas to paranormalxl at writeme.com. <laughs> <laughs> stay kind, stay humble, and remember, don't yuck someone else's yuck. <laughs> I was trying to do something like that. Okay, everything's delayed. <laughs> You can say more words. I'm just listening to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, words, words. Okay, so we are at the um the same one word, you know. But you know what? There's a there's a <laughs> a little light for creepiness. I guess you could sit with my other co-host that I normally have on with me. We we're talking. That should be like. Oh, hold on. We got the one does. So you have to actually hold it in. Welcome to Paranormal XL YouTube edition. Um, I'm your host.